Messer. Messer. Mr. Messer. Okay, so um, when you say that converting fields to grains and vegetables for human consumption is impossible, what is your timeline when you're saying that? First off, I'm, I'm referring to what people think of. You know, they're looking at grasslands and, and forage areas, and that's what they're saying that could, should be converted to grains and vegetables. I'm saying it doesn't matter what the timeline is. If you're concerned about climate change and a carbon imprint, you are not going to convert that soil to sustainable soil for, for grains and vegetables without depleting all the fossil fuels we have trying to do that, that converting. It cannot, it cannot be sustainably done. So you're saying it takes too much energy to do that? Oh, it's unbelievable how much energy it takes. You know, people, people don't realize how much energy you're putting into an urban garden, which is a small plot. You start doing that to 100 acre fields, and it, is, it becomes so, so undoable that there's not enough resources to accomplish the job. So, so your timeline is never? Mr. Messer, explain to them what... Ne you, never, what, what, never, what, is, one question never is a non-ending. It cannot be done in my lifetime. You could not do it in your lifetime. It would take multiple generations if it could be done. Uh, I'm not enough of an expert. I do, not, I do not believe from my knowledge and from what I have read, I do not believe it could be done. That soil type cannot even hold the nutrients that you put into it. The nutrients leach out of it so fast. The nutrients needed for the types of grain and vegetable crops that, uh, that I've heard people speculating you could do. It is undoable from that perspective. Yeah, I basically agree with what Kerry is saying in that, if, you know, if you go down to the Ozarks and I go down there to canoe and that sort of thing, a friend of mine says, we're lucky here in Missouri that we have so much worthless land. Be because it's true, I mean, the land down there is very poor soils and you don't see too many, you know, big farms down there. And there's a reason for that because if the, the soils are very thin. If you, even if you drive around here, I'm, I'm kind of from back east and, you drive through the highways, you see a rock cut, and there's all this limestone with six inches of toil, soil on top. I mean, that situation, and then if you go out west, uh, if you drive through Nebraska, there's an area there called the, uh, the Sand Hills in Nebraska, and basically it's, it's, uh, there are sand hills, and there's, there, it's very, fairly arid, and the only thing you can really do is to raise animals on those soils. Jim, Don't you quick question for you. Animals. Even that, that four to six inches that you're talking about, if you could bulldoze all that up and create a four foot thick topsoil, you understand that, that soil then still could not sustain the type of nutrients it takes for that type of plant growth. Do you understand? Do you, do you agree or disagree with that? I'm not enough of a soil scientist to answer that question. Okay. So, I, I mean, I, obviously, if you have fairly deep soils like you have up, up in Iowa and, and probably some other areas, oh, that's not. what's really suitable. And in Illinois, we're to growing uh, crops because you have rich, fertile soils. And we already played with those soils. 